Mark, good to see you again. Quick turnaround, um, as is the nature of the championship, I suppose, at this time of year. If, if we can start with your team news and, and in particular, how's Dwayne Holmes getting on after missing the weekend? Yeah, Dwayne, last week in training, was nursing a really tight calf. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not as good as what we thought it would be progressing. And the medical guys and also as a staff have decided that it's better that you rest it, you know. And uh, I think he's going for a scan either today or tomorrow. And we should get some news from that. And hopefully it's not too serious because he's been an important player for us in the past weeks. Yeah, so no real time frame until after that scan, I'm guessing. Listen, I always say it's hard, you know, as a head coach. You don't, you, you, you can't ever put a time frame on these things for me. It's all about the individual, how they heal and... and uh, we've just got to respect that and the medical staff here are different class and they really look after the players so we just need to kind of go on how Dwayne's feeling but there is a tightness there he's not really a player that would go out of training otherwise um, so you could see there's something up on him at the moment and the quicker we get him back the better because he's going to be important for us moving towards the end of the season How's Michal Halik getting on after coming off against QPR? Michal's the same. He's uh, turned up and uh, he's been assessed in the last few days and he had uh, he took a knock to his uh, knee, you know, so we just need to see how it settles down. But as I said, um, we've got great competition for, the, for places in the central areas and the defenders have all been doing really well of late and they've got to continue like that. I guess you you say competition, and and if we're looking positively, more minutes for Matty Pearson. Just how much of a boost has it been having Matty back playing again for you, Mark? Massive. Matty is a real leader, and he's a character, and he's a very good player. And what we've got to understand is Matty's been out for such a long period of time, and it's really positive because he's been ahead of schedule and everything he's done. And it doesn't surprise me because the way he goes about his business in the training, he shows real determination. He's professional in every aspect of his game. And uh, in this block of games, we're playing so many games in a short period that everyone's got to be used. But we have to remember, it's not just Matty, there's three or four individuals like that in the team. And they have to be wrapped in cotton wool at the moment because it's impossible that they could play every game and everyone's going to have to play their part. It's not the team that's going to get us out of the situation, it's the squad. I I was going to say on not on Matty and, he, and even Anthony who came on against Queens Park Rangers as well. I mean, just from the couple of conversations I've had with Matty in the past, I can imagine he he's wanting to play every single minute. But I guess for you as a head coach and with your medical staff, it really is important that you that you manage these players. Yeah, listen, I would rather have a player that wants to play every minute like that, even when realistically it's not possible for them. And it shows the determination they've got. No player should ever be happy that being left out of starting lineup. But what we've got is we've got real strength and depth in the central areas. We've also got Will Boyle there. And we've got Edmonds Green, who's been training really well in the background as well, that some days not even making the match day minus one train, training group, you know, because if we're playing 11 v 11 games, tactical work, it's impossible to fit everybody in. Uh, but they're all working hard. They're driving each other. And... Um, it's a credit to themselves because they're up for the fight and no one could question that. You know, the desire's there from these players and uh, we're really looking forward to the challenge ahead. Other, other than the ones mentioned, do you have any other fresh concerns going into tomorrow or, or is it as you were? No, Canberra had a little bit of tightness on his patella um, and he missed out there through the week, but he's trained fine as well. Um, so we just need to monitor that. But apart from that, it's, it's a clean bill of health. You mentioned Romani there. Scott High's also come back from his loan spell. How have you found these these guys who have returned in the January window? How have you found working with them? Because I guess the time that you came into the club, it's maybe the first time you've properly got to see them and, and get to know them. Yeah, listen, it's important that in this short period of time, I've been able to watch them on the training ground and integrate them back into the group, you know, because the group was becoming very settled. And what I think is that they've made the group stronger and they're all driving each other and they're pushing for their place. And that's what it is in football, you know, only 10 outfield players could play and you're one goalkeeper, which is common sense. And you have to fight for your place. And we have a really big squad here. Um, a lot of these young players that were so-called B-team players are pushing to become now first-team players. And that's what we are as a club. We'll have to transition into the first team 
and we're very proud of the way they're going about their business. And everyone has to remember as well, Scott High is a young player. He's not an old player sitting there at 32. He's a young player. He's got a big future and he works very hard. And I think in the last games, he's put in really terrific performances, which is pleasing for us as a staff. Going on from QPR, 48 hours or so on, on from that game, Mark, now the dust has settled almost. What what are your reflections just looking back at the weekend? Just to review the game really in general and be very, very clear about it. You know, Queen's Park Rangers are a possession team. Um, they pride themselves on keeping the ball. We outpossessed them. Um, apart from the, the unfortunate mistake that we made and the error that led to the goal we conceded, they never went in their box more than twice in the first half. We controlled the game. I thought after the goal, we pretty much uh, lost our rhythm and we played a lot of passes back the pitch, which is not like us because we're always on the front foot. And as I said, um, in terms of the second half, when we made the changes and when we touch on the squad, it looks more rounded than uh, a stronger squad. You know, you have a lot more attacking options and threatening all off the bench. We pretty much lifted the, the roof off the stadium. And as I said, that atmosphere that the fans created there in the second half, for me, I think it's the best stadium in the, the championship. I really do. It's a family club and also the people get right behind this team and we need these fans. The fans are key to what, us staying in this league this season. The players need them, the staff need them and the whole club are pushing in one direction to create stability here and to push together as a group to make sure we're safe to build for the future. We, we, we talk about the, the passionate fans and, and the noise that can be created and how important they are for the cause, Mark. Of, obviously, I know I don't need to remind you, there was a little bit of discontent pre-match and in the first half, a couple of banners there. I'm, I'm interested to know, as the head coach, how easy or difficult it is for you to zone out of that and just focus on your job, which is the football inside of it. Listen, I've touched on it before. I've been involved in the game long enough and know how these things work. We're not the only club who's in a situation where the club's up for sale and these things happen. What I would re reiterate is that I very much focus on my squad, focus on what we're doing in the training and focus on what could, we could influence on the pitch. And as I said, everything like that that goes on the outside, it's of no interest to me at the moment. I've got more important concerns and the concerns are that we stay in the league because we build this team for the future. There's a lot of players here who are stepping up from lower levels and what they need to do is they need to find their way in the league and that doesn't just happen overnight. And if you go through our starting lineup, the players are performing admirably well. And we need to turn their performances into wins. But not only one win, we have to start winning consistently. Mm. And we want to do business quick and get ourselves the situation. We've got it all in our hands now this week. We've got two massively important games against two sides who are in the same position as us. And we've all also got games in hand. And what we're doing is we're hunting the teams above us now. It's very clear to see. What what messages have you had from above you, Mark, in, in regards to this? In terms of what, Lou? In terms of the support, you say the belief and going forward. And, and as I mentioned, the discontent. Have you spoken to the people above you? And what, what has their message been to you in this situation? Listen, of course, you know, I'm always in dialogue with Dave Baldwin and uh, Lee Bromby. There's been a lot of meetings in terms of what we're planning moving forward. There's been a lot of support there in the transfer window. We know this club's not got the big money like the other clubs to go out and sign these big-name players. And we'll have to accept that. We've never moaned about the situation at all. And as I said, for me, as a young head coach and my first job, I'm here to face this challenge head-on. I always come to you guys, and what I've done is, in my experience of what I've learned at Hertha Berlin, the only way of getting out of this is by being positive. And I've been positive the whole time through, and that's what I did at Hertha Berlin. Give these players belief, be positive with them, and be clear on what we're doing and what we're doing on the training ground. And that's what gets you out of this situation. Any negativity, you can leave it at the front door. I'm not wanting to hear it. Whatever's happening with the owner selling the club, whatever's happened with the board, it's of no interest to me. And what I would say is it doesn't help the situation. These fans need that atmosphere, like need to create that atmosphere the way they did in the second half. And we're working hard, trust me. This team is working hard to get us out of this situation. And we've got it in our hands now. 
can you feel that's reciprocated with the playing squad? Do you feel the players' heads are, are, are up? Absolutely. You could see that in the way we play. Louis, we've took four points for Queen's Park Rangers this season. Where, uh, where what we would call as a disaster start to the season with four points. The, club, the team stabilised. What we'll have to understand is there's been a lot of players with long-term injuries that are coming back. They're now getting up to speed, which is massively important. And also these new additions, they've also got to go up to speed and they've got to also understand the way in which we play tactically. And and I think that they're coming together really well at the moment. Just just finally on the positivity side of things, Mark, a couple of your post-match comments with the QPR goal, how the confidence drained out a little bit, a little bit of nervousness set in. Does your message change then based on that? And And when the side do come into a bit of trouble or concede the goal, what is your message to them so they do make sure that that draining of the confidence or that nervousness doesn't set in again? Just the same as what we always talk about. Get your chest up, get your head up, keep being positive with the ball, keep keep being clear on what we're about and the way we play and with the way we're structured as a team. And what we did do is we got after QPR, we really pressed them high. I've never seen QPR kick the ball the pitch as much as I, as I have in a game. And it was all down to the intensity and the pressure that we put on them to make mistakes. And for me, that's the only way to go now moving forward. But it comes down to what personnel you have in the team. And these players are coming back now and we're looking more rounded as a group. What impressed me most about the group was the fact that they never let their heads go down too much. They basically kept their self positive. They kept working hard and they earned the right to get back into the game. And for me, in the latter stages of the game, there was only one team looking likely to win there. Of course, QPR had a couple of dangerous counter-attacking situations, but that happens when you're pushing, you know. And our stadium pushed us. They were almost sucking us into their goal to, to, to make a goal happen, you know. It was very pleasing, very, very, a lot of passion in the stadium, I would say. On to, on to tomorrow, it's that part of the season we we touched on at the start of the conversation it's it's such a big part of the season is it fair to call it a six pointer tomorrow I think every game's a six pointer now every single game now to go to the end of the season I think it's 18 games Louis you know 18 games to go and I believe that every single game is a cup final now going to the end of the season and that's the message we're giving the players as well and that's the way we are, you know. We started the game really well at the weekend. We were on the front foot. We were controlling the ball possession. And it was just unfortunate that we let in an error, which is uncharacteristic of us. However, these things happen in football, but we showed a real reaction to it. And we kept pushing and we got what we deserved. And I feel, really feel it was three points dropped because uh, on another day with the chances we had later in the game, we could have took all three points. What, what, what do you make to Blackpool? Because they'll probably be sitting there doing their preparation today, thinking, looking at Huddersfield Town, thinking it's a real six-pointer for them as well. And they'll be looking at the game with yourselves and, and saying, we've got to get three points from Huddersfield Town. Yeah, listen, there's no doubt about that. Um, we're all in the same boat. We're all fighting for our life down there. Um, and we're really focused and we respect Blackpool. They have uh, some very good players in their team. And they have a very experienced manager and coaching staff and Mick McCarthy there. So we'll absolutely respect them, but we're going up here to win. Do you, have you ever come across Mick before? Do you, do you know of Mick at all? Yeah, I know Mick. I've played against these teams and know exactly what to expect. They're always very hardworking teams and he's been very successful in the championship and he's a very experienced manager. And as I said, we will respect Blackpool, but we're going up here to win. Best of luck with it, Mark. Good to see you again. No. <laughs> Hi, Mark. Sorry, just checking the mic was on. Um, you talk about the squad is going to get you out of trouble, not the team. You must have been gratifying to be able to make the number of attacking substitutions that you were at the weekend, probably for the first time since you've been here. Yeah. Absolutely, you know, that's the real the reality of it is that in the period since I've arrived, we've not had the strength and depth that we would expect from a, a championship team. But what we have done is we've given the young lads exposure and they've come in and done really well. But now in the business end of the season, you can see there's strength there. There's, there's players that could come 
put uh, defences on the back foot and bring real creativity there in the final third. Well, what we've got to understand is that these players are still getting up to speed. There are no players that could come in and start 90 minutes week in, week out at the moment, and that's normal because of the situation we've found ourselves with them. Either they've come back from injury, either they're coming in from new clubs and they've got to get used to the style of play and getting used to their teammates and building relationships. But I'm really impressed at the, the rate at which they've done it. And for me, the feeling in the stadium when they all come on there at the weekend was incredible. And I know that when we start winning games consistent, so consistently, that passion is going to be there in that stadium. And I'm me and our staff and our players are very, very proud to represent this club. Yeah, there's a lot more sort of creativity and goals in some of the players you put on in principle. But I think, like Josh Crow and Anthony Nucker, it's been a while since they've done it. Are you confident that they, they can get up to speed for that? Yeah, absolutely. You could see it in the way they played. I think with Nucker, the, the big thing is the know-how, the personality, the quality that he possesses. He's a real footballer. He's got what I say, football in his blood. It's in his DNA. He just needs the ball everywhere in the park. And he's a fighter, you know. He, I don't know if people noticed, but after we scored our goal, he was the first one out on the touchline pushing the players alongside the staff. And that's the type of atmosphere and experience that I'm used to in the clubs I've worked with. And I just wish that we're young players and the guys that are transitioning into this league will look at them and learn from that because that's how you win games when you push as a group. There was some, as you've mentioned, some sloppiness on the ball on Saturday, particularly in the, the first half. Is that something you've looked at? Is is it just one of those things? Is it the lack of confidence? What what was down? What was I that? I think it's there? a mentality thing, you know, like when you can see the goal when you're on, on top, it's a real uh, body blow and it's happened to us a few times this season. Um, and what we've done is we've showed now against QPR on two occasions that we could come back from going to go a goal down. And that's really pleasing for me as a head coach because you could see the determination and the character there in the team. I think what it is is that you can't get caught up in the emotion of the game. You have to just keep doing what we're training, keep believing in what we're doing and showing a real composure and a steadiness. And we have enough experienced players in the team at the moment that will bring that composure moving forward. And I guess you've got new players as well who, we were just talking to Martin Magorn about this, but who haven't had that sort of bruising experience the first half of this season. Probably not a coincidence that it was Joe Hungbo, Ollie Toten who's been out injured and Martin Waghorn combining for, for the goal. Yeah, it's listen, it's outstanding, you know, and what you, you do is you want these relationships to be built and also to be developed, but it takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. We talk about it and even at the Premier League level at the moment, you could look at the Chelsea's of the world and so on. They're making 18 signings and they're very much in transition. It takes time, you know. Arteta in his first season at Arsenal and so on. These things take time. Now Arteta's sitting top of the league. This is a transitional season. We're remitted, we're remitted to stay in the league, which we're absolutely confident we'll do. And we showed that in the performances. The games are always tight. They're hinging on big moments. But what we've got now is with our transfer activity is we have players who could take their big moments now. Yeah, there's... No sort of room for error in these upcoming games, though, is there? It needs to be everyone completely at it, going for the three points, regardless whether you're away from home, at home. They're massive games for you in this, this season. Yeah, listen, I would rather have an ugly win, you know? It's not about the style of play at the moment that's my focus. My focus is about how we win and the manner in which we win, and it's all about the concentration levels moving forward. We've got players in there that could deal with all aspects of the game, we're very strong when we deal with long balls. We're very strong when we're playing 1v1 situations because we train all the scenarios and we leave no stone unturned. And we're really excited for this challenge. It's going to be relentless with a lot of games, which I believe is going to define our whole season in the next week or two. And I also believe that the players understand that as well. It's in our hands and we've got to grasp it. You have missed two opportunities last two games where you could have got out the bottom three. Are you confident you're going to do that tomorrow? Yeah, and that's the thing you've got to understand. We just stick at it, you know. Um, we've got 18 games to go and we've just got to roll our sleeves up and stick at it. On another day, we'll come away from that game with three points. But we take the point. We've took four points now off of QPR over two games and uh, we move forward now and we go into this game with confidence. Yeah, um, you talk about winning ugly um, and 
style of play, is that something that you sort of need to earn the, the right to have in your view? It's, it's something that you need to get those wins before you can look at developing? Listen, I think in any league, you know, even when you look at the Premier League, um, you talk about the style of play, but these teams will turn you for 10, 15 minutes at the start of the game and they like to play in the opposition's half and that's what we've got to do as well. We've got to be on the front foot. The message is very clear in all the scenarios we're training and training. We defend on the front foot. We're very aggressive in everything we do, not only defensively, but on the ball as well. And we have to be more positive and we're trying to support the guys to do that. And as I said, it does not matter how we win now with this part of the season. It's getting the wins. And when you get the wins, the confidence floods in and the, all the players are getting up to speed. They're building relationships together and it's positive now moving forward. It's got to be positive. I'm not wanting any negativity about this building because it's not going to help. The players need to be positive. They need to get flooded with confidence every single day going into the training to move forward to win these games. Cool. That's all for me. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mark, as you, as you showed on Saturday, you've got a lot of um, tactical flexibility within this squad now. And you talk a lot about focusing on yourselves rather than the opposition, but I just wonder to what extent you'll sort of tailor the tactics to the opposition because it, it's one of the beauties of the championship, isn't it, that almost every other game you face a different style of football? Yeah. What I would say is that um, there's a, there's a, everyone knows there's a very big focus here on hard work, effort, and uh, it's important that we've got big fitness levels. We talk about being strong in the duels and running hard in the games, but don't, don't be fooled. There's a very big tactical element. There's never a day here the work's not aimed at what we're playing against in terms of opposition. And you could see that it's very clear on what this team's about. They have a clear structure. The principles are there. If you're standing up, you'll know it's a team that play with clarity. And that's the way we've got to go moving forward. Every game we've played is tight. Every game's competitive. And that's what I expect from the squad. But we have to realise these players are finding their way in the league. And the experienced guys are pushing them along and they're getting the support from us. But now we've got important players coming to the building in January with, with even more experience at even a higher level. And what they're doing is they're bringing a real quality to the group. And I understand sometimes we get wrapped up too much in formations so, and what kind of matters is the, the principles that stay the same regardless of the shape. But do, do you think we'll see a lot more a lot more changes of of shape as uh, in the games to come. Yeah, I do listen. You know, like earlier on in the phase in here, uh, I played a lot of systems with back fours, and I moved to a back three as well. And it's shown that we're flexible, you know. And the guys, uh, they they know and understand the systems because we train it relentless, and the principles always stay the same. What what was really impressed with against QPR is the intensity which we pressed high, and when we pressed high. As a group, we actually forced QPR into making a hell of a lot of errors. And as I've touched on before, I've never seen a QPR team kick the ball long or kick the ball out the pitch as much as we did. And what happens is you bring them uh, into a situation where they're forced into mistakes, you know. But as I said, we're starting to get the players that can play in the areas of the pitch. And that's why we're doing that moving forward. And does the players you've signed... You just have to look at things in in a, in a slightly different way. In that, you've not you've not signed sort of like for likes to fit in a formation. You've signed players who give you different things. So do, so whereas three at the back was working quite well for a while, now suddenly, I'm not saying three at the back won't work, but now suddenly you you think about well, how can I best use knock knocker or waghorn or whoever? Yeah, listen, absolutely. Good players could play in any system. There's no doubt about it. The players make the systems. And this is why we're lucky because we're a recruitment team have identified these players alongside Lee Bromway and there's been a hell of a lot of work put in with him and constant dialogue with Dave Baldwin as well and it's been a magnificent window in my opinion and uh, there's real strength and depth there. At the weekend we played 4-3-3 which, which I call 4-5-1 against the ball defensively but later in the game we were 4-2-3-1 you know and it does not there's never a doubt in what we're playing. It's very clear to see. And uh, the most important thing for me is that there's clarity on what we're doing. There's clarity on the areas we play. 
was clarity on what we're doing defensively and it was clear for everybody to see the intensity in which we pressed there at the weekend. And I think that's why the majority of the fans in the stadium got behind us because they could see how much hard work and effort was put in. And that which this club has built its foundations on, hard work, real spirit and aggression because we're a working class club and we've got to push to move forward now for the future. And one sort of feature of the players that were brought in in January, a lot of experience, a lot of leadership. I know they're not, they've not come into a team just of kids with no leaders in it. I appreciate you had people before, but do you, have you sort of noticed the, the, the difference on the training ground for the likes of Knockhart and Wycorn and Loughton bringing their extra experience to the mix? No doubt about it. They've made a big uh, impact and uh, they've got to continue working hard. What I would say as well is there's no guarantees for anybody to start in this team. No one player. Because there's strength and depth now and that's what you've got to have. What we found earlier in the, the, my, my first period here is when you were playing 11 v 11 tactical work in the training, the, the great team, for example, which was the start of 11, were very strong. They were almost too dominant. And now it's not the case. It's very balanced games in the tactical work. And that's due to the strength and depth of the squad. But guys, listen... We knew the injury situation. We knew the disaster start to the season. What we've done is we've stabilised it and it's all been done to hard work. Hard work, effort, tactical work, fitness work and everybody as a group has pushed and they're pushing these players to the limits and the players are really adapting well to it and we're very focused on what we've got to do. We've put ourselves in a great position now. It's all in our hands and if we take it and enjoy this next big couple of weeks, we're going to come out of that bottom three with flying colours, in my opinion. And as we said earlier, Martin, Martin was in before, spoke spoke very well, very you know, very intelligently about the the sort of situation you're in. I, I just wonder how how important that know how of the division of relegation battles is in this situation. Yes, listen, it's very important. We've got, we've got players in here that have been experienced enough in promotion pushes. We've also had players that have been experienced in relegations. And it bodes well for the future, you know, because the experience is invaluable, especially for the young lads or the players that are coming up from lower leagues that are finding their way in the team. And as I said, what's pleasing for me is that we've been able to attract the Waghorns, the Loughtons, the Knockhearts, because they've looked at the, the squad and the team from the outset and the way they've been forming. And they've been saying they've got a big chance to stay in the league and they want to be a part of this moving forward for the future. Yeah, I mean, one thing we talked with him was about sort of self belief and positivity, and I just wonder if it if it sometimes helps if somebody comes in from outside to actually say to these players, "I've played against you before. I know you're a good player. I know you're a good group of players." You know, rather than people within the group saying that sort of thing. Yeah, listen, there's no doubt about that. The problem we've got at this club, and everybody's got to be clear, is the disappointment from last season, because everybody knew that the club was one step from the Premier League, and we all understand that. But everyone's got to understand the first season when Carlos Cordoban came in here, it was a transitional period. The team were getting beat 5-0, 6-0, and so on. And they moved forward from that. But in that period, there was no fans in the stadium due to COVID and so on. There's pressure there. There's no doubt about it. But the players are handling it well. And I think our young players and our players that have been brought from the lower leagues that are capable and have the quality to play in the championship, they're going to benefit for that and they're going to get stronger for this experience moving forward. And as I said, we're growing every week as a group, which is important, and the players are showing real fight in the games.